In this video, we'll prove the idea behind the moment generating function, i.e. the most important uh, property, which is when we uh, differentiate the moment generating function and evaluate it zero, we are getting row moments. So for instance here, I have the moment generating function of the exponential uh, distribution. I take derivative, the first derivative, I evaluate it zero, and guess what? I get um, the mean, i.e. the first row moment. So what is so special about this function that when we take derivatives and evaluate it zero, we get moments? Let's see. To prove this fundamental property, we need to be familiar with a Taylor uh, expansion. And just a quick reminder, here's the formula for Taylor expansion. It says you can express the function as um, a series of terms from zero to infinity by taking the derivative of this function, okay, uh, dividing by n factorial where n stands for the nth derivative and times it by um, x minus a. And a is a constant at which we derive this uh, Taylor expansion. So we usually it's zero. Um, and when it's zero, it's called a Maclaurin series. So, what's the definition of the moment generating function? Well, it is just expectation of this function e uh, to the power of dx. Okay. So, so our mission for now is to expand the term inside this expectation, i.e., e to the power of dx. You should know by now that any derivative of e to x is just going to be e to x. Now, if on the top of this I tell you that uh, take derivatives of e to x and then evaluate at x equals 0, well, guess what? Uh, you will always get e to 0, i.e. you will always get 1. Let's not get confused here. Our variable is t, it's not x. So when we differentiate e to tx, each time we'll be getting something like x e to tx for the first derivative, x squared e tx for the second derivative, x to the power of 3 for the third derivative, etc. So the end result is that we're going to get uh, x to the power of n, where n stands for the derivative. This will be always uh, there, t minus 0 raised to the power of n, okay, and n factorial in the denominator. So all in all, this reduces, reduces nicely to this expression here, where um, we end up with x t x squared times uh, t squared and x to the power of 3 times t to the power of 3 divided by n factorial. Crucially, when we, obviously we've got the expectation operator here on this side, what's going to happen when we just take the expectation of each term, so where e to 0 is just 1, so expectation of 1 is just 1, plus uh, e to x times t, so what's this here, here, and here. Well, it turns out that these are actually moments. Expectation of x is the first moment, expectation of x squared is the second row moment, and expectation of x to the power of 3 is the third row moment. So key observation. So we are virtually one step from proving the fundamental, fundamental property of the moment generating function, which was that if you differentiate it and evaluate at 0, you get moments. Now let's see what happens when we differentiate this expansion here, I'm talking about this term here, what's going to happen when we differentiate the, this term and evaluate at zero? Okay, so let's take the, the first derivative of this term here, yeah? What happens? When we take the first derivative of this expansion and evaluate at zero, you'll see that anything that has t in it, i.e. this expression, this expression, um, will drop because you will just replace t by zero and therefore it uh, evaluates to zero. So the only expression that will survive is the one which corresponds to the first derivative, i.e. this one. This one will survive, so it's the only one that will be uh, remaining, okay? Wow, so something happened here. When we take the derivative of the Taylor series expanded moment generating function and evaluate zero, we recover moments which correspond to the nth derivative that we've taken of this expression. So here we've taken the first derivative, therefore we're going to get the first row moment. If we take the second derivative, okay, so derivative of this basically, because we have differentiated it once, so if we differentiate second time we're going to get the second derivative, what do we get? Second moment. If we 
differentiate one more time, what do we get? We get third moment, okay? So there you go, we've proven uh, the key property of the moment generating func function, and we proved it in the following way. We first expanded the, the MGF in Taylor series, then we differentiate at uh, zero, we took derivatives, first, second, third, and fourth derivative, and we differentiated zero. And we noted that all terms dropped out except for uh, one term which re remains. And the term which remains corresponds to the, to the derivative you've taken.